All right, this is Brother Aisha Yar coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is true from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aqua that's listening and learning. Uh, today, I want to get into a topic talking about how women will be saved through childbearing. And the reason why I want to bring this out is because I know a few women where, uh, you know, they look at it as if the only reason they're going to be saved is because they can they are going to be able to become pregnant and bring forth, you know, children, you know, pretty much bring back the two thirds and everything like that. And uh, pretty much, you know, you shouldn't really look at it like that because, you know, there's plenty of scriptures that tells you a woman who brings forth children is a blessing, man. And, you know, and I'm going to bring a couple of scriptures out, just give you a few examples of that. And then at the end of the day, too, you have to get out of this Western Hemisphere type of mind, man, you know, because the thing is, man, you know, women have been given so many opportunities and so many uh, chances in this life to the point where, like the scriptures say, women rule over men. Women are put in power seats. You know, women are given more responsibility than what they actually should have. All right. At the end of the day, man, you know, the man is supposed to take care of the, pretty much everything, man, you know, but the woman is supposed to take care of the household. And one of the things that you do within that household is you take care of the children. OK. And like I said, man, and then the thing is, man, it's a it's a blessing to first of all, to have kids, because I know uh, certain women that can't have them, you know, they're, they're barren, man. They just can't have kids. All right. And I already know in the back of their minds, you know, that's a pretty, pretty hurtful thing because you got to remember, man, having kids is your gift. That's one of the things that Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah has gave to you. OK, so for certain women to be out here and, you know, they realize that they can't have them. That is definitely a curse, man. That is a curse. And, you know, that's why it's going to be a, a great thing. For women to be saved because of that, man, you got to remember that's going to be a responsibility, man, because only a, a small remnant of us are going to be saved out of this destruction that is to come, man. So when you got to get ready to uh, when the two thirds come back, you already know they got to come back because of uh, of you being able to have children, man. Those seeds have to come back. Those men and women have to come back, man. Because the most high, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah is a man of his word, and he's gonna give all uh all Israel all things. So they have to come back, man. They have to come back. And um pretty much, man, when you have kids, we have children, you know, that's a blessing for you as well, man, because now you get to uh you know bring forth great men, you know. Uh you know what? I'm just going to get into the scriptures before I even get into that, because I got these scriptures written down. I was going to explain this. So I'm just going to get right into it, man, just so I can show you instead of me just, you know, rambling on. I'll just show you so then you can get a, a better understanding. Let's get Genesis 29 and 27. And it says, fulfill her week and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years and jacob did so and fulfilled her week and he gave him rachel his daughter to wife also and laban gave to rachel his daughter bilhah his handmaid to be her maid and he went in also unto rachel and he loved also rachel more than leah and served with him yet seven other years and when the lord saw that leah was hated he opened her womb but rachel was barren and Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben, for she said, Surely the Lord had looked upon my affliction. Now, therefore, my husband will love me. Okay? Now, you look at this scripture. When you read this scripture, man, it says, Therefore, now my husband will love me. Because, you know, men want children, man. Men definitely like to see their kids, man. They want to see their families grow. They love children, man. We do love children. You know, on this side, our children can be a burden. You know, your children might come against you and everything like that or whatever the case may be because we're under these curses and we're in this flesh. But on the other side, man, we're going to want to have all kinds of children, man. And that is going to happen. But when you read this scripture right here, it says the Lord had looked upon her affliction. 
All right. Meaning the Lord had looked upon her, her burden, her problem that she was going through, man. And, and, uh, her womb was open pretty much. She was like saying like, Hey, the most I looked upon the problem that I had and he blessed me so I can have kids. So my husband could love me. All right. That's one of the reasons why, um, you know, you would be saved in childbearing, man. And like I said, your men will love you because you're going to bring him. You're going to give him many kids, man. Many, many kids. They're going to be yours as well. Don't, you know, don't get it twisted or nothing like that. But at the end of the day, man, you're going to give him many, many kids, man. You're going to give him more pleasures for his fat from his family, you know, because at the end of the day, man, we all, you know, men love their families, man. They, they you know, because the men are supposed to be the protector, the one that looks after everybody and everything like that, man. He want to make sure that, you know, each one of those individuals make the correct decisions in life and everything like that. You know, the male, the male, um. Oh, what should I say? What's the word I'm looking for? The male in the house, I would say that. The male in the house is definitely supposed to be the example, uh, the, the stronger example of, of what to do, man, because he's going to give you the correct decisions and everything like that. And uh, the mother will, too, because like I said, the mother has to take care of the household, you know? But at the end of the day, man, in order for a man to feel complete, man, he, he wants a family, man. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to give him many, many children, many children. You know, it's going to get to the point where, you know, uh, it, it might not be a rare thing to see a, a woman have twins or triplets or so forth and so on, man. Because you got to remember, the curses will be lifted up off of you in the kingdom. So now you're better to have kids without going through that pain as well, man. Because you're going to be in those new spiritual bodies. So if you're going to be in those new spiritual bodies, you know, <laughs> you won't be, you won't feel that pain when you, um, get ready to have kids, man. You could just, you could just have the kid or whatever, like, uh, like an animal, you know, when you see an animal give birth, man, they don't scream or anything like that. And they have like four or five kittens, four or five puppies, whatever the case may be. Hey, the kingdom might be just like that, man, because like the scriptures say, you got to be fruitful, fruitful and multiply. So, hey, your, and your womb was going to be blessed, man. You know, especially you, um, you sisters out there, you aquas out there that make it on the first go around, you're going to be blessed, man. And this is one of the ways you're going to be blessed because you're going to be able to bring forth and, uh, help, help nourish and help establish the kingdom of heaven by bringing back the men and the women. Okay. Let's get, um, Luke. Let's get Luke. Um, one and thirty-seven, and it says, "For with the Most High nothing shall be impossible." And Mary said, "Behold, the handmaid of the Lord; be it unto me according to thy word." And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah, and entered to the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. All right, see? And I want to bring this out because, like I said, man, you're gonna bring forth uh you're gonna you you're gonna bring forth great men, you know? Like you're gonna bring back the two thirds. They're not gonna be <laughs> They're not going to be like great, great men like the elect is going to be. All right. But at the end of the day, they are still going to be uh, above the heathens, man. They're still going to uh, uh, be, be in a higher position than everybody else, man. You know, only the elect, the 144,000 in the first and the rest of the elect that made it. Of course, they're going to be put in a better position in, in, in life or whatever. But the two thirds got to come back, too. But when you look at this, man, you know. Mary, she brought forth Yahweh Shai, all right? And just to get it for you Christians or whatever out there, man, the babe didn't just leap into the womb. Mary and Joseph had sex, man. And that's how Yahweh Shai was born, okay? You know, that, that should be, that, that, that subject shouldn't even pop up. But anyway, <laughs> but it said, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Why? Because she was able to have children, man. She brought forth 
Yahweh Shai, which is the, the, the greatest man of all time, man. The, the Lord. All right. <laughs> the Lord, man. You know, you you women help produce. Well, not produce. You help you women help bring forth great men, man. And that's that's a wonderful thing because now, you know, after you done gave birth to these great men, now these great men can go out here and do what they're supposed to do in the spirit in the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. All right. And like it says, it says, Blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Okay? Because at the end of the day, man, you know, that's your purpose in life. Your purpose in life is to bring forth the children. You know, you, you take in a seed and then you protect that seed for nine months. All right. And then after that, you bring forth the the um the the, the soon to be uh boy or girl, man. And that's what it needs to be, and that's what it's gonna be. All right, let's get something else. Um, let's get First Corinthians. Let's get First Corinthians seven and thirty-four. And it says, "There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband." All right. Having kids is one way that you can please your husband, man. You know, your husband might come up and be like, man, you know, I want another kid, man. You know how many TV shows and movies it is where they had examples of that, where the men, the male will walk up to her, his woman and then he'd be like, man, you know, let's have another kid or whatever. But the woman will reject it because she was on to her career or she just didn't want to or she wasn't feeling him at that moment she was just like yeah i just don't want a big family whatever the case may be and then the male gets shut down man you know because like i said man men want to have kids they do but you know on this side man it's just not <laughs> it's just not really wise to have many kids man especially in these end times man we very close to the day of the lord and you don't want to bring forth newborn hey the scripture even say that it says woe to the to the babes that give suck in those in those days or to the woman that give suck in those days i'm paraphrasing something like that you know because hey when you have all of these children and everything like that then the lord get ready to bring judgment hey a lot of those kids are going to get caught up in that judgment too just for the simple fact that they may have been wicked in their past life or they're going to have to um feel the judgment just because their parents was wicked man you know, because a lot of you didn't want to um, come back to the ways of Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai. So guess what? The Lord could take out your children just to get back at you for not coming back. You never know what the judgment could be. But at the end of the day, it says right here, but she that is Mary caring for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. So when it comes down to it, man, he'd be like, man, I want to have another kid and everything like that. You know, you're supposed to embrace it because you are going to be able to help him. Um receive that gift which is which is more children all right that's one of the ways you can please your husband is by giving him more children you know he can't do that any other way <laughs> you know if he's trying to do it any other way man that's some unseemly things that's going on that's gonna get him destroyed <laughs> you know this we ain't we ain't about that letter community surgery type life man we about the natural way of living which is the woman receiving the seed and, she, and, her, and her bringing forth children. All right, it's a beautiful thing, man. All right, uh, let's get um, Sirach. Let's get Sirach. Wait, wait, wait. Sirach twenty six, right? Sirach twenty six and fourteen. And it says, a silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. A shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace, and her continent mind cannot be valued. As the sun when it, when it arises in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. See that? In the ordering of her house. So, what is one of the things that a wife does when she orders the house? She takes care of the children, man. You know, it ain't just about, you know, cleaning up or whatever. And, uh, you know, ultimately, it's all about, you know, uh, like I said, pleasing your husband, making sure he is at ease. 
when he's at home and everything like that, he's supposed to always make sure that he's in a good state of mind. But it says right here, as the sun, when it arises in the high heaven, so it's the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. One of the ways she orders a house is she takes care of the children, which is what you did, man. You brought forth these children. Okay? You get to teach your your your, your daughters the correct way of living, you know, teach them how to be shame faced and faithful. You know, teach them how to be um teach them with great virtue. All right, teach them to be like I said right here, well instructed. You know, because your daughters are gonna grow up to the point where they're gonna be at a marriageable age and they're gonna become wives to other Israelite men. All right, and you're gonna want them to be in the best position that they could possibly be in, so then they can do what they're supposed to do, their role in life, which is to please their husband, which is to order the house. Okay, like it says, it says, as when the sun arises in the high heaven, when the sun arises in the high heaven, everything is bright, everything is at its peak, everything looks beautiful, man, because the light is shining on everything. You get to see everything within its glory. And that's one of the things you women will have. You will have your beauty back, which is going to be a, a, a great thing. But you are going to see the glory of you taking care of the household, man. You know, you know how a beautiful thing it is, you know, when a when a male gets home and then <laughs> have he been working all day or whatever, he, he smells food cooking or whatever. You know, the place looks great. Everybody is smiling and happy to see him and everything like that. And then, you know, you as a woman walk up to him and greet him, kiss him, whatever the case may be. Then you know, might, you know, rub him on his shoulders or whatever a little bit just to help him relax and be at ease. Might bring him a drink or something, you know. Hey, when you come home, it feels it, it feels like home, man. You know? <laughs> and and that, that's how it's gonna be, man. And trust me, it's gonna be like that for you all too. You know, you're gonna um uh benefit off of the kingdom as well because you're gonna have servants, you're gonna uh your husband is going to love you as well because the scriptures does tell the men to love the women as well. You're going to receive that love right back, man, because you got to remember it's going to be heaven on earth. You know, whenever you think about the word heaven, man, you just think about nothing but good things, man. You're going to be at ease. You're going to relax. You're going to feel at peace as well, man. But this is one of the things, like I said, that's going to get you um, into the kingdom, man. It's childbearing, man. You're going to bring forth the children. You're going to take care of the children. You're going to uh, raise them correctly. And you're going to like it, man. And that, that's just what it is. You're going to like it. See, the thing is, like I said, with a lot of these women on this side is they, they just feel like they need to do more. You know, they feel like, oh, man, you know, you got the men that's going to be saved because they went out in the streets and they they taught the word and, you know, they uploaded the videos and everything and all of these other things. The only thing I got to do is to take care of him and uh and and just bring forth the children and that's it hey man don't look at it like that don't look at it as if you you need to do more and anything look at if anything look at it as a blessing because you don't have to do anything <laughs> you know only thing you got to do is just sit back and listen learn and do uh what you're supposed to do which is please your husband man that's it you don't got to do nothing else just relax man the men doing all the hard work. And then at the end of the day, you know, you got to uh, you gotta understand the balance within that too, man. Yeah, the men are going out into the highways and the byways. They are uploading the videos. They are sacrificing their time studying the scriptures daily. So, yeah, man, their reward, you know, has to um, come at a, with a great price, man. And that reward is going to be overwhelming, for the men but like i said man y'all gonna uh receive everything too man you know but you just gotta remember you know get out of that mind state where you feel like you have to do more man just be like hey it's gonna be beautiful man especially like i said for you ones that can't even have children let's think about that man think about that you're gonna uh if you're part of the elect you're gonna be beamed up your body's gonna change within a twinkle of an eye the next thing you know, you're going to realize, you're going to be like, man, I'm in a whole new body and now I'm able to have kids. You're going to feel very, very good about that, man. Very, very good about that. So we're going to close it with this. We're going to close it with 1 Timothy 2 and 9, where I got it, you know, the whole subject from. 
It says, uh, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor do you suffer authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed in Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in a transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved and childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. All right. So you have to continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety, meaning you have to um, come into this truth, be of a clear mind, have faith of the words of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, and have charity, man. All right. Help brothers out. Uh, with um, certain things like making garments, uh, uh, tights, if uh, if it comes down to that, you know, uh, whatever the case may be, man, you know, whatever uh, might fit you as far as you uh, showing your faith within the, the gospel, with showing your faith within the ministry, hey, amen, you do that, you know, you don't uh, leave your man just because he's in the truth of anything, You like I said, you're supposed to be learning it with him, all right? Then, uh, you know, you have to take in this word for what it is, man. You know, because uh, at the end of the day, man, there will be order in the kingdom of heaven. All right. But at the same time, you know, we're going to have fun. We're going to all laugh and be at ease and relax and enjoy ourselves and everything like that. But life would not even be close to the way that we live in right now, though, man. You know, that's one thing you got to remember. And that's one thing you got to get your mind out of is that. This world has uh, taught you what they want you to learn and they taught you the way that they want you to live. But that's not going to be the case on the other side, man. It's going to be the correct way for everybody to live. And guess what, man? Everybody's going to enjoy it. Everybody's going to be at ease, man, because they're going to realize this is the way we should have been living all along. Even the heathen nations are going to enjoy, you know, saying this way of living after that thousand years is over. Except for Esau, <laughs> Esau gone. Esau, you know his his future is nothing but torture. But anyway, I just wanted to bring this out just to show you, like, like, hey man, you know, don't don't beat yourself up and feel like, oh man, you know, this is the only reason why I'm gonna be saved is because I can have kids or whatever. No, nah, man, don't don't be doing that, man. Like the scriptures say, man, it's a blessing. It's a blessing for you to have kids. It's a blessing for you to bring forth. The children, which will become great men, all right, they'll become great men, and then you're, then they're gonna, then they're gonna become great princesses, all right. They're gonna become great examples for the future generations and generations and generations of people, which are the Israelites, which are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right. So, just want to bring that out, man. So with that, man, I'm gonna say, call Halayim. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rekakwadash, double honest to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is true from, honest to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity, and Shalom to the Aquath that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratazah, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala, keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.